Coke Zero. Okay. Anyway, so this video um is going to be about. Please hold that thought. I'm really thirsty. Yeah, you know. Anyway, this video is going to be about highlighting and contouring, and I really want to do this video because a lot of you guys suck at it. Well, not you guys. I don't even know you, so it doesn't matter anyway. That's nice. I live in an area where girls walk around and think that they're the shit, and they're not, because they don't look like the shit. You can talk like you're the shit, and you can act like you're the shit all you want, but if you don't look like it, then you're not the shit all you are you? If I could talk English, I give up. I give up. Okay, anyway. Um, I, I see a lot of girls. I work in a um in a salon where there's a lot of foot traffic. <laughs> there's a lot of foot traffic. There's always a lot of people. Um, where I work, um, I always see a lot of girls. Um, come get their hair done. Um, shopping. Moms bringing their daughters to come get their hair done. I've seen some pretty, really good makeup jobs that teenage girls can do themselves. I've seen really horrible ones, but the thing that stands out to me the most out of everything that I've ever seen in my life, um, it, it, ranging from really good makeup to black all the way around your eyes to false eyelashes falling off to using lipstick for your, your, um, eyebrow to color in your eyebrows, trust me, I've seen it all. Um... One thing that bothers me the most is when um girls' foundation does not match their neck. Um, like for instance, my um neck, arms, everything is darker than my face. I don't tan my face. I'm not tanning right now, but when I do I don't tan my face. But naturally I am my body's tanner than my face because my face never sees the sun because there's always makeup on it. And like I said, I don't tan it. So, um, that is one thing that I would have to say that bothers me the most, um, is when girls' foundation does not match the rest of them. Another thing that bothers me is when girls, um, talk about, oh, I saw somebody do their makeup like this and I thought I'd try it. Trying things is fine. Trying it when it doesn't work and then continuing to do so is not okay. <laughs> like, I see girls, like, um, under eye highlights. Like, I'm a big one on under eye highlights. I love my under eye area to be, like, super highlighted. I like my contour to be super chiseled, and it is, and you can see it, and it still looks somewhat natural. It's not over the top. It's not avant-garde. It's not crazy. It, everything matches. Like, I am a big person about foundation, contouring, highlighting, and blush. Like, <clears throat> and then another thing is girls with super rosy pink cheeks. It's not cute. It's not necessary. There's no need for it, so don't do it. Um, so basically this video is just going to be me going through some products that you can use, um, and I did use in the video all drugstore products, every single one of them except for one, which is the Locket Longwear Foundation by Kat Von D. That is the only non-drugstore thing that I used and the only reason that I used it is because I am way too dark for it right now but I am way too light for my drugstore foundation so I mix the two together um these two work really well together they both have a very great matte finish I just kind of want to talk about this one for a second though because I know I did a video on it but there are some things that I did notice about it that I want to talk about um when you buy this or if you've bought it this is the back of the bottle Always research and do your homework on a product before you buy it. I do not regret using this product. I do not regret buying it. However, um, I found some things about it to be true and some things to be not true. Um, one thing is that it was full coverage. Absolutely 100% true. All the time, full coverage, flawless, airbrushed looking face, matte finish, everything. Um, it says on here that it's transfer resistant. Um, it is and it isn't. On me, it's not. If you have dry skin and you use this foundation, good for you. It's not going to be transfer resistant. However, me, I have combination to oily skin, most mostly oily. So this does transfer. Like if I wear it, it's going to transfer. Like if I hug you and you're wearing black, you're going to see it on your shit. So just stay away from me because I'm a big greasy mess. It's not cute. Not cute. Anyway, um, so it is transfer resistant for dry skin people. I'm going to say that again for dry skin people. And then, um, 
matte finish. It does have a matte finish. I love, 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 love the finish. The reason that I wanted to talk about this, one more thing though, fragrance free, no, it's not fragrance free, Kat Von D, I don't know who you're trying to fool, bitch, this is not fragrance free, shit smells like paint, but it smells like paint when it's wet, when it goes on your face and it's dry and it's on there, you're good, but when it's wet, it fucking stinks, anyway, so I wanted to talk about these two together, I really, if you cannot afford to go out and buy a 30 Five. I'm gonna say it again. Thirty-five, and I have bought ex more expensive foundations. I'm just not into expensive foundations anymore. Like when I was younger and I started wearing makeup, I always had to have the most expensive name brand thing. I always had to have the next best thing. I always had to, you know, I don't know. I was just so into it, and I still am. Like I love makeup and everything. Now though, that I'm older, I don't see the point in going out and buying a thirty-seven or anywhere. My foundations used to range anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars. Um. Not anymore. <laughs> no. Um, I went out and bought this because I am a big fan of Kat Von D's and I do love her makeup line and I own a lot of her things from her makeup line. However, um, these days I just don't see it. But I just, I went out and got it because I own a lot of other things of hers. Mostly, like, I have a lot of name brand things, but I have a lot of drugstore things too. And I am a bargain shopper. If I can find something that is as good as this, which would be this, and this is amazing. Then I'm going to use it. So out with that for right now. Anyway, I wanted to talk about this L'Oreal True Match Foundation as well. Because, like I said, it has a lot of um, a lot of the same qualities as this one. The only thing that they do not have in common is that this does not have an SPF. Let me explain the difference between a foundation that does have SPF and one that doesn't. One that has SPF in it, which would be this one, my drugstore one. It has SPF in it. Um, if it has SPF in it, it is not photo friendly. When you take a picture of yourself or somebody else takes a picture of you, and especially if your camera has a flash, bitch, your face is going to look white and the rest of you is not going to look white. The rest of you is going to look tan. Your face is going to look white. I don't know why, but having a sunscreen in your foundation turns your face white in pictures. That's the only thing that I don't like about SPF foundations. However, I am more on the fair side, so it's smart for me to have an SPF because I don't want skin cancer because that's not cute. This does not have an SPF in it, however, um, I don't know if I can, I'm just going to show you how white this is. Yeah, I'm not that white right now. So, yeah, I mix these two together. Anyway, side, that's, that's done with. Um, so yeah, back to what I was saying, I do use a lot of drugstore products in this video, so that way everything is affordable for you. Um, excuse me, right down to my primer, um, that I use is, um, drugstore and actually I have quite a quite a few drugstore primers I believe I have three or four two of them are hard candy oh my god that's horrible I just almost broke that um okay so I can't find my other one but this one is hard candy this oh my gosh this one is NYC and this one is Rimmel London so yeah if you have oily skin I would not recommend using this. Um, it is a skin illuminating primer skin illuminating primer. <laughs> Alright. Um, it says that it restores your shine, which is like the natural sheen that your skin has. This replaces shine on your skin because it's fucking oily. That's why. It looks oily. It looks greasy. There's shimmer in it. I am not into primers with shimmer. I'm just not a shimmer girl anymore. I don't even know if you can see this. It's right here, but even just feeling it, it just it feels oily and grainy all at the same time. I don't even know how that's possible. But um yeah, it says that it restores skin's natural radiance, provides a soft, luminous glow, can be worn alone or under makeup. I would not wear this alone because you're gonna look like you're sweating. You wouldn't wear it under makeup if you're oily. For people with dry skin, this is fine. Some people don't even believe in primers, but I am so oily that my makeup will just slide off. So I need something to hold it on there, but something oil-free. So I decided to buy the Fix and Perfect Primer from Rimmel London. And it says that it prolongs um, foundation wear, which it does. It smooths your skin. I don't know how it's going to smooth my skin when I have acne, so false. And that it minimizes your pores, which it does. However, I don't know why, 
this says that it is oil free but in my most oily areas this does not hold my foundation on the one that I am absolutely loving right now that I will probably love for the next few months until I find something new is the NYC um, Smooth Skin Perfecting Primer. Um, it is in shade 684. I don't know why a primer would need a shade. It's white and it dries clear. So yeah, um, this says that it is a skin perfecting primer and it can be worn alone or under makeup. I don't know why they would say that because a primer is to hold your makeup on. That's the whole point of a primer, right? So why do you wear a primer by yourself? Or by itself. I don't get it. Why would you wear a primer by itself? Anyway, so, um, so basically it just says all the things that the other one does, but, um, it just, I don't know. This one just works better than that one, and it holds all my makeup on all day long in every spot on my face. So, yeah. Alright, so I am going to list all the things that I used in the bottom bar. Be sure to check that out. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything you want me to do, anything you want me to ask, or some questions, whatever, go ahead and just tell me. Find me on Facebook, Instagram. I'll link every. I will put everything in the bottom bar. So be sure to read the bottom bar. Um, rate, subscribe, and enjoy the video. Okay, so first I'm gonna go in with my skin smoothing perfecting primer by. NYC and um I used to not believe in primers at all so you don't have to use one this is just the way that I'm going to do it and I'm just showing you um, how I just how I do it just because everybody does it different and I never used to believe in primers only because everybody's skin chem <clears throat> chemistry is different and some people don't need a um primer however me Personally, I am more on the oily side, so I really need a primer to make everything stick because I really have not found a foundation except for one, and right now it is too light for me, but, um, yeah, I have not found any foundation that will just stick to my skin seamlessly all day and hold my, um, or I haven't found a foundation that will not just slide off my skin because I am so oily. So, um, and just apply it all over the face and it's supposed to minimize your pores and uh give you kind of like a natural finish I guess for your foundation my lip ring is retarded right now but um then as for my foundation because I'm um one is too light one is too dark so I'm gonna mix the two together and the first one and I actually do it in layers I don't I don't mix it and then put it on my skin I put one on my skin and then I put the other one on. The first one is the Locket Longwear Foundation by Kat, Wa Kat Von D and I know that I've talked about this before and I think I did an um review on it but so I'm just going to take it and pump it um just one pump on the back of my hand and I'm going to be taking my flat top brush by e.l.f. it's actually a powder brush but I use it as my foundation brush because it gives me a really flawless um, coverage and for the first layer of this I want it to be really nice and sheer so when I take it like on the back of my hand I'm just gonna kinda like take it and move it like around so that it looks like a huge big disgusting blob on my hand and it's gonna make it more sheer and then I'm just gonna pat it on a couple spots on my face and you can literally see how white this is and why I need to use two foundations. So I'm just going to keep taking the product until it is gone and just pat it on my face. And just that much one pump will cover my whole entire face and now that it's on there I'm just going to start buffing it. And you don't ever want to put foundation underneath your eyes because the second that you do that, you're going to have creasing in your fine lines. And I don't like that. I think it's a gross look. And I think that that just adds to um, girls not knowing how to do their makeup and being a cake face. I don't think it's a good look at all. Cake face and wrinkles and fine lines and setting in fine lines. They just don't make sense. It's not a cute look. 
And then so I'm just going to blend this in on my head, or on my forehead anyway. And because, like I said in before, this is a highlighting and contouring video, so I will be doing a whole thing on highlighting and contouring too. And as you can see, there's like super, super like pale, ghostly, sickly white on me. So I'm going to go... And by the way, I don't even know what color this is in because I threw the box away and it doesn't even say on here, but it is full coverage, um, transfer resistant, matte finish, fragrance free. I don't know about the fragrance free. It kind of smells like paint, but once you start to put it on your face and blend it out, that smell goes away. It's just when you first apply it when it's wet, but once it dries, it goes away. Um, but I don't know what shade I'm in. I just know it's really white, and I bought it when I was really white, so now I'm not, and so now I don't use it by itself. Um, the next one that I'm going to go in with <clears throat> and layer on top of the Kat Von D Locket Longwear Foundation is L'Oreal's True Match Super Blendable Makeup um, in shade beige, or nude beige, I believe, yeah, nude beige W3. Um, and as you can clearly see, that is super dark for me, and I was tanning, so I was using it. And the way that I'm going to apply this is I'm just going to literally put it on like war paint and just stripe it all over my face. Um, I don't know how well my camera is picking that up, but yeah. And I think that this makes my skin look um, pretty flawless and blended. And the underneath color that I put on, the Kat Von D one, definitely helps to tone the, uh, I don't want to say orange, because it's not orange, it just looks orange on me right now, but the darker tones in it down, I guess I should say. And then I'm just going to take that same brush and go over it, and I'm patting first. I don't think that you want to, like, swipe on it right away um because then like you're just like wiping it off like I think that or maybe it's just me because I've always done that I find that if you pat it and then like blend it a little bit it will give you like that soft airbrushed like look and you don't have to worry about like streaks or anything like that so yeah that's just the way that I do it and you always want to get down on your neck because my neck is a different color than my face. It is darker than my face because I do not tan my face. Because I don't want premature lines and wrinkles and skin cancer. I'm good. That much I can promise you. I am good on that. And just continue patting. And you can see instantly the coverage that I have. Um. You can see that it's pretty flawless and seamless and everything that I like in a foundation. And if you guys have watched my past videos, you all know for a damn fact that I have shitty skin. And my hair is in my way. So, yeah, this, um, those two foundations, I really like the combo of them. I like the combination of them together um, because they are both a matte finish. They both... Um, they don't dry dewy, they don't stink, and I just feel like the two of them together give me that airbrush look that I like. Yes, I do put foundation on my lips all the time, don't ask me why, I don't know, I just always have, and I probably always will. So yeah. And it's really, like I said, important to blend down onto your neck. I go about here. Don't ask me why. I always have. That's the way I was taught. That's the way I do it. And then, plus, I just don't have to follow your rules because they're not my rules. They're your rules, not my rules. You follow your rules, and I'll follow mine. So... The next thing that I do after that, because I do really like this area of my face to be super highlighted and super awake, and because you don't put foundation underneath your eyes, I did not put any foundation underneath my eyes. I slept last night. That's the difference. I look lively because I slept for once in my life. One time. <clears throat> anyway, so, um, as far as concealing goes, 
I actually go back in. Oh, I left my brushes in there. That's so shitty. I don't even care. I don't even. Whatever. Fuck you, brushes. Um, I actually go back in with the locket. Kat Von D. Whatever. I actually go back in with it, and I do not even one pump on my hand. I do like one drip on my hand. And I use that as my concealer. Usually I would take a brush and make it into like a V shape. But my brush is in my bathroom. I'm like looking at it right now. I'm kind of mad that I left it in there. But I kind of just go down. Oh I hate this. I hate rubbing under my eye area. Oh it's so bad. And I just kind of do it in like a V shape. But the funny thing is that I will apply this with a brush. But then blend it out with my finger. I don't know why. I just do. So yeah. And I know that this is a foundation, but I'm taking such a small amount of it that it doesn't matter to put it underneath your eyes. And plus my foundation is already applied, so this is kind of just like highlighting. And this is one step of highlighting that I wanted to show you, and then there will be another one after this. I just can't stand seeing girls walk around with like funky makeup, and like I said, this is the reason that I wanted to do this video, because... I live in an area where everybody thinks that they're the shit, and I'm not saying by any means that I am, but if you're going to like act like you're the shit and talk like you are, at least look the part. Do you know what I'm saying? Look the part. So you just want to take your finger, and like I said, I apply it with a brush and then blend it out with my finger, but I apply it all the way back to my hairline. Not in my hairline, just to it. And I stop like right before my hair meets my skin or whatever and then I go down the side of my nose and I know usually the thing with um, highlighting and contouring is that you want to contour the side of your nose to make it look smaller and I actually will be doing that just not yet but you don't want to like ignore the side of your nose because you're concealing and highlighting all at the same time so if you have redness extra redness around your nose or you have um discoloration then that would be a good reason to go down the side of your nose to cover it up. And you can see, um, yeah, this side. You can see the transition from light to dark. You can see the line. Don't worry. It's not going to be there for long. We're going to blend it out. And then we're just going to keep patting. Just patting. You never, ever want to rub or tug on your under eye area because it's such a sensitive area that, um, if you like tug on it, it's like you're just causing yourself more drama than it's worth in the long run. So yeah, now that we look kind of freaky and like the clown a little bit, <laughs> you're going to take the same brush that you applied your foundation with and just kind of buff out all the harsh lines. And it gives you, and you kind of, I do it with a really light hand, like I grab my brush with just these three fingers, and like when I do my fan, my foundation, I like use all of my fingers, I guess, but you kind of just want to like pat and then rub a little bit, just to kind of get the harsh line out. And I always pat just a little bit on it. Now, before I do anything, I'm usually going to set my under eye concealer, but I think I'm going to wait until after to do it just to kind of give it a chance to set in a little bit because that's the technique that I've been using for the past couple of weeks. I don't know. I just change it up every so often. But so here we go in with contouring, and I just want to say that I know contouring for a lot of girls can be really um, intimidating I think would be a fair enough word to use and I say intimidating because there's so many different shades of bronzers um, contour powders contour liquids and you never know which one to use um, I personally like to use one with a more copper or bronze base and I use what's called tropics it's a so baked bronzer by hard candy and this is what it looks like I'm gonna try to swatch it for you to see if you guys can see it and like the swatch definitely does it just just does it justice but um it looks really orange and it is and I like that on my skin but if you blend it out the right way it doesn't come that way I like using a dark contour shade because I can use a little bit of product and get a strong contour like I like I like that super chiseled look and I'll contour one side of my face and then you guys can look at the other one 
the other side and see how not um in depth it is i guess you could say like um have much dimension with the side of my face minus the contouring like you just you can see how horrible <laughs> it's you just it's crazy the difference and then the other one you can that i use is a marble powder and it's just called bronze and it's by pure minerals i got it from my work it was a tester that had never been open so it became mine and that i pan pan so sad pan so sad because i don't even know where to get this get this product anymore so um that's what it looks like i like it because it has lots of different shades in it and it's not um just one shade of i mean like this one has different shades in it too let me just do a side by side real quick the hard candy one this is hard candy this is bare mineral oh, pure minerals they both have um different shades in them this one has um more yellow orange this one has more pink tones to it and i know that you can't see that on camera because it just looks brown but looking at it in person it has more like pink undertones or cool undertones to where this one is much more warm i like the warmth just saying those are the only two bronzers that i own um so yeah and i depending on the day how i feel the look that i'm going for because you eye contour different for different eyeshadow looks like if i have a really simple eye i contour it up like i am contoured 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 if i have a really um um smoky or crazy eye then i won't contour my face as much um i'll keep it light for this one because i don't have any eyeshadow on and for the benefit of you watching the video i'm going to show you a really chiseled strong contour and i um i use this brush it's very small um i use it for very chiseled looking cheekbones um shrinking in your forehead making your jaw look um more chiseled and straight and then this is the one that i use and you can clearly see the size difference in those two like this one is a mountain compared to this little one but um this is the one i go for when i just want like a bronze sun kissed look so yeah but we're not going for that today we're going for more heavily contoured so i literally pack this on my brush and one thing okay and spill it everywhere one thing that everybody needs to know about contouring is that the place that you start is where your contour is going to be the darkest so if you start right here you know right below your cheekbone in the front that's where your contour is going to be darkest and that's going to be your biggest mistake because that's going to make you look like a fucking idiot so what i'm going to do here's a here's a trick right here go from the top of your ear to the corner of your mouth obviously you're not going to go all the way down to the corner of your mouth you're going to start or you're going to stop about the arch of your eyebrow so what i usually do is i start at the top of my ear and i draw a distinct line i don't know if you can see it i can see it but and if i can't see it well enough then i'll just go in with more so I just, um, I like a very distinct chiseled look, like I said, preferably. And it looks crazy. Trust me. I know. I do this every day of my life. And then I'm not going to put any more product on the brush, but I am going to go up to my forehead, like in my hairline, and I usually put it just literally right on the top of my forehead in this area. And I place it and I blend and I'll pat and blend and pat and blend and like if you just like kinda repeat the pat and blend and blend in circular motions even with an, the angled brush you get like a perfect blended look and I know that it doesn't look very blended right now on the camera but once I put my setting powder on and then like you know bring everything together it's not gonna look so crazy and this um like I said just pat and then go in circular motions and you can start to see how it looks more blended out and I don't really want to go above or below this line I kinda of want to stay in that same area and just continue to blend 
and blend it a little bit into your ear. And you can already see, like, one side, this is the side without the con, this is the side without the contour, that's the side with the contour, and you can already see. And, like, I'll even take my foundation brush because I like it so chiseled and go from the bottom of my ear and just make a line. And you can see it cleans it right up and gives you that, like, super chiseled Kim Kardashian type contour. And I generally like to keep this area blank for a highlight. And then one more place that your contour should go, and even if you want to do this, you can do like the simple way. You can do like one, or like a three, you know, but I don't do that because I don't do that. Um, the jawbone, I don't like to contour as heavily as the rest of my face. I will simply use a very light hand and just kind of go like seriously, just with the line of my jaw and a little bit behind my ear right there, just so that there's no line of demarcation and then I don't know if you can see it but I just blend it down and because you did it with such a light hand it's you shouldn't have like a very crazy line and then just like really swift quick motions just back and forth and then you can see instantly how one side of my face looks completely slimmer than the other one. Like I have a double chin on that side. <laughs> so, and then you're just going to repeat the process on the other side. Drawing a very distinct line starting at the top of your ear and stopping where the arch of your eyebrow, like, would meet your cheek, I guess. And I just keep, I don't like to go in with like a super, super lot of product. Like I know I say like I pack the product on the brush. I mean I do, but I do it in a way that allows me to still be able to layer it if I want it to be more extreme or if I don't. And like I said, no extra product. Just go and blend in your big forehead region because that's exactly what I have is a big forehead. So yeah, you just I want to blend right there a lot and make my forehead look smaller because it's not a small forehead; it's a gargantuan motherfucker. And like I don't know if it's just me, I go cray, cray with bronzer. I don't know why, I just do. So once again, going back in, blending, blending, blending this harsh ass line out blending a little bit into the ear and this is also the brush because it is small enough that I'm going to go in and contour my nose with And then, oh wait, did I do this side? Yeah, I'm on this side, yeah. Okay, I'm good. I know what I'm doing, okay? I'm not retarded. Behind the ear. Very light motions. <clears throat> very light hand. Dude, I knew this video was going to be super long. Oh well. At least you'll learn how to contour your face the right way. And if I'm not teaching you, I'm sure that there are other people on YouTube who can. But better to know. And you can see, you can instantly see how your face just looks so much slimmer. Mine looks a little crazy. Especially because the lighting right now is not that great because it is 1.30 in the morning. Don't ask me why I'm up when I have to be up in like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 hours. I have to be up in eight hours, not nine hours, just whatever. So anyway, same brush, but I'm just going to use the tip of the brush. So I'm going to use the tip of the brush, and I'm going to go in and seriously just drag, like I turn it sideways, so the longer end is towards me, and I just draw a line, 
on the side of my nose. And I look like I'm, like, painting disease on myself right now because I look so weird and not quite blended yet. Trust me, it gets better. And I do have more of, like, a rounder shaped nose. My nose is, like, not slim at all. I mean, it's not like a big, greasy-ass, bell pepper-ass nose or anything, but it's not um, a slim, tiny, cute nose. It's like a little weird, like, slopey, um, bell nose. So I'm just going to take the rest of my, bl my blush, my brush, and kind of blend that out. But I don't want to blend it out too much because I do want the shadowing right there to make my nose appear smaller than it is. I'm going to get an eyelash and my fucking eyeball. So then the next thing that I'm going to go in with is blush. And I just use, seriously, this blush brush I have had for eight years, I think. It's a fucking Revlon one. There's no brand on it, no anything. It was a Revlon one, but it's so old and I will never ever use any other blush brush than this one. Um, I do use different foundation brushes, different contouring brushes, different brands of contouring brushes. I like this one the best. It's e.l.f. It's cheap. I like it the best. I have an expensive one um, that very, uh, it, it resembles this one very similarly, but I like this one better. So, I like more of a dense foundation brush to make foundation appear smoother on the skin and go on more sheer. But anyways, back to blush. Blush brush. Long time. Had it. Long time. Blush. Hard candy. Living doll. This is what it looks like. Yes, it is broken. Because I'm a genius. So, um, this is like a baby doll pink. It is called Living Doll. And it is a baby doll pink color. And it has yellow undertones in it. I like yellow undertones and I like baby doll pink. And the two mixed together are just a really good combination. Literally, I just swirl my blush around in it. Tap off the extra shit. I don't like to put my blush on the apples of my cheeks. This is just a side note. Side note time. Rant. Anyway, go. So people will tell you, some makeup artists will tell you, I don't do it this way. I used to do it this way. I tried it this way. I don't like it. You put it on the apples of your cheeks to brighten up your face right there. No, that is the place where a highlight is supposed to go. And this area right here is where a highlight is supposed to go. And that is supposed to make the top of your cheek one pop out and make your, the highlight and your contour at the same time are supposed to make your cheekbones look higher. The blush is for the color of, you know, to add color to your face. Um, because obviously not, you're not going to have all these crazy contour lines going on when you're done. So the blush is to add color to your face. Simply, that's what it is for. I don't care what anybody else says. That is what it is for. So literally, I start at the back of my cheeks and just fan it up and very with a light hand like people always tell you oh well, if you use a pink blush it's just gonna look crazy and fake no it doesn't if you have a really light hand with your application it doesn't look fake you just have to know how to get that smooth gradation from one color to another blending your blush and your contour together tell me does that look silly freaking clown pink no it doesn't it looks fine people are stupid and don't listen to somebody who's not a makeup artist or who hasn't been trained. I have been trained. I'm a makeup artist. And people, like, it's funny that I see, like, it, and it drives me crazy. And I'm not trying to put anybody on blast. I'm not trying to be, like, a huge bitch. But I've been, like, into makeup since I was 13 years old. And before that, I was just never able to wear it because my mom was like, Oh, you can't wear makeup. You're too long, blah, blah, blah. But once I started wearing it, I educated myself on it. And I found every single way to educate myself on it, and I listened to a lot of different people, and I took certain things from certain people and made it my own. There are no rules to makeup, however, there are fundamentals. Just just like everything else in the world, there are fundamentals. So, blending is one of them. And the fact that, like, <clears throat> if you know what you're doing, you can make something that's super crazy look super not crazy. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's whatever, so... Yeah, I don't know. Rant is over because I'm done with that. <laughs> so for my under eye highlight, I am using a pressed powder from Pure Minerals in the shade uh, Porcelain. That <coughs> that is what it looks like. <coughs> pan, once again, pan. Can you tell how much I like it? 
Anyway, so um, this looks really white on camera. It's really not. It is very translucent, but it does have a yellow undertone similar to Ben Nye's Banana Powder. I'm going to use it for my under eye highlight and to set my powder. No, I'm not because my fucking brush is in the other room. Damn it. Um, I have a brush in here. Oh, I do have a brush in here. Okay, this isn't the brush that I usually do it with, but this is the brush that I'm going to do it with today. Um, Lady Gaga, hello, thank you. Awesome. Anyway, so usually it would be like a, I don't remember what number it is in Mac, but um, it looks like this, but way smaller. <laughs> I don't I don't know how to explain it. That's what it was like. But um, it's in the bathroom, and I'm not going to get up and go get it, so I'm just going to stick with this. And literally, I am patting my under eye highlight, and this also will set my um concealer. And you can see one side to the other, like how different it looks, like highlighted. And it's not, I like this because it has just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of sheen. It's not shimmer. It's not glitter. It's not, you know, glitz or anything. It's simply sheen. So it kind of gives like that dewy, like under eye highlighted look. And I also will go down my nose one time, once again, patting it down my nose and not rubbing it. And then I'll kind of just fan it off to the sides to kind of downplay the contour a little bit and I will go on the top of my lip or on my top lip to kind of highlight everything make it look cute whatever so then I will go in which is my last step for my highlighting and contouring video because I know this video has been so long I was seriously sitting here I've been ranting everything like that for 30 minutes shoot me now I don't care Anyway, there are two things that I really like to use. You can use them or you can't. One of them I really like, but I would usually only use if I was going to take pictures or if I was going to an event where pictures were being taken um, or if I was just taking pictures of me all the time. <laughs> um, it is the LPI Definition Powder, and I'm pretty sure that they have these in big brands too. Let me tell you what, it's all the same shit. So, um, cheap alternative to anything that you would find that is, um, Makeup Forever. So, I'm not going to use that because it's 1.30 at night. Where am I going to go? So, and then the other one that I use that I really like gives you a matte finish, by the way. And seriously, it's it looks like cocaine. That's the only way that I can put it to you that I know that relates to me. It looks like cocaine. So, um, yeah, it's a white powder. This one is um, Hard Candies. It's called Welcome Matte, and it is a mattifying powder. It does not have a name. I broke it right now. I can't believe I just did that. Okay, anyway. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have a shade because it's a translucent setting powder pen. And it came with, like, a little sponge thing but I don't use that so anyway um I totally hit pan on this because I love it and I use it every single day of my life mostly every single day of my life anyway um and I take it on my beauty or essence of beauty brush and it is just a big fluffy brush and I really like this brush because it um it blends all of this craziness that you're seeing up here it blends all of it seamlessly and perfectly and I start on my forehead and I just move my way around my face and I but I will not touch like my blush area where I put my blush some people would think that it's easier to put your blush on after you do this because it is I just don't so there and you kinda just wanna I tap on my nose because my nose is where I get the oiliest like right in this area in my t-zone is where I get the oiliest so I just pat right there. And then on my chin I get oily, so I'll pat. And then I'll take this and I'll just kind of rub it in between my jawbone and where I did my contour beneath my cheekbone. So that way it blends out the lines. And then I'll just go on top of it a little bit.
and then just kind of with no extra product go down and now I'm just blending out my contour on my jaw because you never want that to be too pronounced because then you will have people walking up to you telling you that you look like a fucking retard and that's because you do and that's not okay so yeah highlighting contour video done bonito I'm done that was what I wanted to tell you so there you go told you goodbye I love you Good night.